there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. So this is a big week for Magic Origins. It came out about a week ago, and last weekend was the first weekend that it was tournament legal, and we saw some variations of old decks, as well as some new decks appear at the Star City Games Open in Chicago. And, to, of course, between that and packs being open, it's going to have a pretty significant impact on pricing. So let's just jump in and see what's been going on. We'll start with Standard, and we'll look at the top five cards that lost value this week. Number five is... Languish and Languish lost a dollar forty-one, bringing it down to nine eighty-five. Now Languish had a ton of hype around it during the pre-release time. This is supposed to be the new damnation, right? Well, the only issue with it right now in the meta game is it doesn't get rid of some of the most popular creatures, creatures like Siege Rhino. There's just a lot of five toughness creatures out there right now, so a lot of decks can't really use this to deal with decks like Obzon. So where is this getting used? It's still getting use in Standard. It's those Obzon decks that are using it. They're trying to get rid of their opponent's creatures without getting rid of their five toughness creatures. So it is seeing Standard play, maybe just not as much as some people hoped or expected. However, it's going to see play. It's going to continue to see play. Wait till the cons block rotates out. It will see more play. And it's still going to be an alternate card to use in Modern if you can't afford to go out there and buy four copies of Damnation. So modern players are also going to attach themselves to this card. So don't expect this to be a permanent thing. This card will definitely see value. It's just stabilizing right now. Don't let that scare you. It's going to get a lot of use. Next is Erebos' Titan. Now this saw a $1.61 drop, bring it down to eight thirty four. Again, hype around it during pre-release time. It didn't really see a whole lot of play during the first weekend. I think some people expected this to bring Mono Black Devotion back. I don't know if that's really going to happen, but who knows? You know, this is the second weekend coming up, and then we have the Pro Tour coming up next weekend. Maybe somebody does bring back Mono Black Devotion, or just plain uses this as a beatdown in a deck. It's a forecast that costs 5-5. Five, five. <clears throat> that's a good... That, those are good stats. So it could show up, and it could stop this decline, or else it just might never find a home in a deck that's devoted enough to black to play it, and if that's the case, it could continue to drop. Next is Collective Company, and it lost $1.77, bringing it down to $12.72. Seeing a ton of play, I mean, the main reason for this drop is it does appear in the Clash Pack that just came out last week. So a lot of players are able to get their hands on this card, as well as some other really good cards like Siege Rhino and Windswept Heath. It's actually a very good product that they put out there for the Clash Pack, and because of that, it's impacting some of the more valuable cards. Now this is temporary, even though a lot of Clash Packs are sold, they're sold in big box stores. This card long term is going to be a great long term investment. It's seeing tons of standard play. It's going to continue seeing play in multiple types of standard decks. And on top of that, it's going to see and has already been seeing modern play. So it's a good long term investment, but it could come down still a little more as more clash packs get opened. Coming in at number two is Goblin Pile Driver. So this lost two dollars and twelve cents, bringing it down to eleven twenty-six. So this was the card that was supposed to come in and break standard and break modern. So the first weekend, it saw some play. There were quite a few Goblin decks in the top sixty-four. They were running four copies of Goblin Pile Driver for the most part. So yeah, it really did make an impact. Now there was just a ton of hype around it. Maybe it didn't make as much of an impact as some people thought it would because it didn't win the uh, tournament. But keep an eye on this card. More to come from it. If the Goblin deck is viable, this thing will probably go through the roof. If it's not all that great and gets outclassed by decks like Obzon, well then maybe it will continue to decline. Uh, but we haven't really seen its impact yet on Modern. That's just kind of starting. There was a Modern tournament held last weekend by Star City Games, also in Chicago, and there was a little bit of Goblin Pile Driver showing up here and there. So we'll have to watch this one. This one could go either way. There's a good chance, though, that it's going to find its deck and find its groove and eventually increase in price. And our number one standard card that lost value this week was Liliana Heretical Healer. So she's at $23.49, but she lost $2.43 this week. So not much of an impact during the first weekend. There were a few decks here and there running one-ofs of her. 
uh, but really she wasn't the planeswalker that really made the impact. As a matter of fact, four out of the five planeswalkers lost value this week. Now part of that is expected because they're planeswalkers, they're getting sold at very high prices during the pre-release time. There's a lot of hype around these cards. So some of it's just normal stabilization. Uh, long term, if these cards find decks, they're going to be successful. If they don't find decks, they're not going to be successful. And the only thing that you have to worry about with these particular planeswalkers, Liliana included, is is there a life for them beyond standard? At this point, we haven't seen it for most of them with possibly one exception that we'll talk about in a little bit. Now let's move on to the top five standard cards that gained value this week. And coming in at number five is Thopter Spy Network. So this went up 55 cents, bringing it up to 420. And I really like this card all the way back from when it was first spoiled and then when we did the set review. And it's definitely seeing some play. There's kind of a control-ish artifact deck that's using this out there and that deck could very well catch on again the next couple weeks are going to uh, let us know which decks really hold on and which ones kind of get sideboarded against and fall off the map but i think this card just is very powerful and is very versatile it's a expensive bitter blossom in some ways and i think we're going to be seeing quite a bit of this in standard Coming in at number four is Rally the Ancestors. So this saw a dollar oh nine increase, bringing it to a dollar fifty, which could surprise a lot of people. This is one of the lowest value rares, probably in standard. Uh, but what made this jump up? Well, at the Star City Games Open, this saw some success, and there was a deck using this along with Nantuko Husk, which is now standard legal again. And what was kind of cool about that combo was you get to Rally the Ancestors, and then instead of exiling all your creatures, you can. Sacrifice them to Nantuko Husk, including the Husk itself, and all those creatures go to the graveyard. You're able to then play another copy of Rally the Ancestors and bring them back. So it actually worked pretty well. It was a very successful deck, and there's a good chance we might see more of it this weekend and also at the Pro Tour. So if that's the case, pick up your Rally the Ancestors. I mean, they only cost a buck, so why not? <laughs> and that way you have them in case you want to build this deck for Friday Night Magic next couple weeks. Coming in at number three is Obelisk of Erd. So it went up $2.52, bringing it up to six ninety five, and it did see some play over the weekend. So as long as these Goblin decks still are popular and are still successful, and they're running at least a couple copies of this, it will continue to go up in price. There's also speculation over elf decks. One elf deck did make the top 64 this weekend, but it did pretty well. So there's a chance that there might be more elf decks this weekend. So some of this is a little bit of speculation, but at the same time, it's a card with Convoke. It's pretty easy to cast if you're playing anything with a lot of tribal. So it could definitely see some long-term value. Could potentially see some modern play as well. Next is Hangerback Walker coming in at number two. This one went up three dollars and fifty-two cents, bringing you up to seven sixty-five. This was probably the breakout creature of the weekend. This was what the control decks were going to, and the control decks were playing this kind of side artifact slash thopter theme to them, and it was working out quite well. Uh, this was a cornerstone to kind of the blue-white control deck, so watch out for this one. I'd probably pick these up now even if you're paying seven eight dollars for them because i think long term these are going to maybe be this standard season's siege rhino or possibly like thrag tusk in the past so uh, this is probably a good time to pick the, these walkers up and the number one big mover in standard this week was jace so jace went up ten dollars and 41 cents bringing you up to thirty dollars Jace was a card that was maybe undervalued a little bit during the pre-release time. It was actually a Planeswalker that you could get for under $20, which is kind of unusual before a set came out. Uh, but I think what people forgot was the front side of his card is extremely powerful. Looting is powerful. Putting a looter out on your second turn is very powerful. So Jace saw the most play out of all the Planeswalkers this first weekend and he was indexed with uh, four of copies of in a lot of the decks so jace did very very well i think he's going to continue to see play the only thing with him much like the other planeswalkers there's a chance that after standard is over 
he might not have much of an impact in modern but if any of them will cross over into modern this is probably the one that will just because of the power of the loot effect all right time to move on to modern and let's look at the top five modern cards that have lost value this week Coming in at number five is Blood Moon. So Blood Moon went down to $1.42, bringing it down to $52.45. Still very expensive. This particular uh, version of Blood Moon is the original Modern Masters version. So that's the one that lost the most value. Overall, Blood Moon is still a great card. It might lose a little more value. Maybe if you're lucky, it gets down to 45 bucks or so. But for the most part, the only reason this is even going down is because it had some huge hype a couple months ago when it was a key card to stop decks like amulet bloom in the pro tour and everyone ran out and got their copies prices spiked and now they're just stabilizing to the normal range this is still a 40 to 50 dollar card no doubt in my mind but it could drop a little more Next is Snapcaster Mage, and Snapcaster just saw a little bit of hype after the Modern Masters release as well, when everybody kind of panicked and just realized, wow, it's going to be another two years probably before this gets reprinted, and it will be in the next Modern Masters, and until then, it's just going to go up in price. So, uh, Snapcaster spiked about 80 bucks. now it's just stabilizing. It went down to $1.45, bringing it to seventy five sixty seven. Still very expensive. It probably will still go down a little bit more, but I don't really see it going down much below $70, quite honestly, before it starts going up again. It's just too good. It's too versatile. It gets used too much. It's going to continue to increase, and it's probably going to be a $100 card two years from now when it finally does get a reprint in Modern Masters, assuming that it does. Next is Cryptic Command, and this is the original Modern Masters version we're looking at here. It lost $1.86, bringing it down to $41.09, and partially that's just because a lot more copies just went into the wild with the new Modern Masters version of it. So this particular version lost a little bit of value. This is a short-term loss. If you're in the market to pick up some Cryptic Commands for your decks, probably do so in the next couple weeks you might be able to get it for 35 40 bucks if you're lucky uh, other than that it's just going to start climbing again coming in at number two is elish norn grand cenobite so this lost a dollar 87 bringing it down to 22.90 this particular version is the original new pyrexian version and again it's just a card that got opened in modern masters 2015 and it's the type of card that players don't necessarily need four of they're not trying to build decks with four elish norns they're getting them for their commander decks they're getting them for their cubes they just need one copy uh, it's seeing play in urzatron and usually it's just a one of in that deck as well so you don't need four copies and a bunch of them just went into the market so you're going to see some price fall Again, this will stabilize. It, maybe it goes down to like $18 or so, but at that point, it will stabilize and will start to creep up again. That's just the kind of natural order of it. And our number one card that lost value this week was Arcbound Ravenger. And again, we're looking at the original Modern Masters version of the card. It went down $3, bringing it down to $39.99. So still a very expensive card, but that's just the way it goes with Affinity Robots decks. They do really well for a little bit, and then everybody sideboards against them because it's just so easy to put artifact hate in your sideboard. And then everybody kind of moves away from them for a little while from the metagame until people forget about them. They move on to other stuff. They sideboard against the other stuff, and then somebody says, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to play Affinity. <laughs> and then these cards go up in price again. So that's just how it goes with artifact decks in general in Constructed. So this card... It probably will lose a little more value. Maybe if you're lucky, it gets down to about 30, 35 bucks, uh, but it won't get much lower than that. And then next time it comes around, it will just go back up again. All right, let's look at the top five modern cards that gain value this week. Coming in at number five is Life from the Loam. And similar to the Artifact decks, the Dredge deck kind of has the same sort of life cycle. It does really well for a while, then people sideboard against it, and then it goes back down. Well, it's kind of on the upswing now. People all started sideboarding for robots. <laughs> so now uh, it gives a chance for Life from the Loam to shine again. It went up 79 cents, bringing it up to 705. Number four is Damnation. Damnation just keeps going up. Um, don't know what else to say about this card that we haven't said over the last probably five weeks. It went up 81 cents, bringing it up to $57.81. 
it didn't get reprinted in Modern Masters. It did see a Judge's promo reprint, but it just wasn't enough to affect the market. People want this card, and they want it for their modern decks. They want it for their casual decks. They want it for Commander. They want it for Cubes. And maybe it gets reprinted in a couple of years in Modern Masters, but again, this by that point could be an $80 card or maybe even more. Minamo School at Water's Edge. So this is seeing a, a little bit of play in Modern, usually one-ofs in decks, uh, but it's getting enough play out there with its power to untap a Legendary Permanent, which is pretty good for one blue, that it is seeing some price creep. It's at $1.06, still only valued at $18.77, so if you need to get a copy for your Modern play or for your decks, probably not a bad idea to pick one of these up. Number two is Liliana of the Vale, and she went up $1.28, bringing her up to $98.86. So we haven't seen Liliana on the list for a while, and it was mostly because her price was in a little bit of a holding pattern due to the fact that the uh, Pro Tour qualifier season, last season, uh, was giving out her as a promo card to its participants. And I think that just kind of held the price stable, and people were kind of waiting to make sure that it didn't crash the value of the card, which, of course, it didn't. Not enough copies went out there for it to really matter. But I think now buyers' confidences are, are restored, and they're going out and they're buying copies of Liliana again. So, yeah, she's a $100 card. She's going to keep going up. It's going to be probably at least two years before she's reprinted. Uh, hopefully in the next Modern Masters as a Mythic. Uh, but in the meantime, she's going to continue to creep up. By the time Modern Masters come, comes out, if she is reprinted, she could be the next Tarmogoyf. I mean, she could be a $150 card probably quite easily. Uh, so barring just normal fluctuations, I think she's going to continue to increase. So I hate to say it, but if you don't have copies, you may have to dish out 100 bucks to get your copies to play with. And our number one mover this week was Agorio's Vengeance. So this was a card that lost a, quite a bit of value last week, uh, but it went up $1.29 this week, bringing it up to $37.99. And this deck's sticking around. I mean, myself included, a lot of people thought that this deck was a little bit of a flash in the pan, that people would just sideboard against it and it would start to fall off the map. But it's still around and it's still doing pretty good even as of last weekend. So... People are trying to put the deck together, and this card being a core piece of it just has seen another value increase. So it's hard to say for sure. This could be a risky investment because this deck could still get sideboarded against heavily and just fall off. Uh, but it seems to be incorporating itself into the metagame a little better than I thought it was, maybe even just a week ago. So... If you want, if you're in the market to play this deck, I mean, you're going to spend the 38 bucks for copies of this card. If you're not really looking to go in that direction, then you probably don't need this card for anything else. But hey, we'll have to kind of watch this one and keep a close eye and see what happens to it in the future. Having said that, those are our cards for the Market Watch this week. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. If you're still looking for quality Magic the Gathering videos, click on one of these annotations. And if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the breaking MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, crazy product openings, or gameplay videos on Heroes and Legends MTG. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.